So grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ to all of you and welcome to this episode of Coffee Time with me, Father Sam. And I am presently in the hall as we are starting our preparation for the experience of the Eucharist that begins on September 29th. And as you can see over my shoulder, all the different rooms being uh, constructed using the pipe and drape. And I am right now in our immersion room, actually lift on the lift here. I can show you how the, it works. If I can, I can't do it with my coffee though. So I'm gonna set my coffee down. And so I'm in the lift and uh, to, to work on the projectors to get them straight uh, to the screens. Uh, so the, the, there we go, lift is going down, and lift coming up, so look at that. So yeah, working hard to get this thing all set up, and you can see our truss, of course, uh, that's holding up the projectors, and so things are going really well, uh, and we can still use more volunteers, though. Uh, it's not necessarily for the setup, and we do have people here for the setup, but certainly for the operations uh, to greet people, to usher them through as we begin in the immersion room with um, the video immersion, and then after the video immersion to move out uh, to then begin um, the journey through the different rooms. So you can see the different rooms, you can see the top of them here. Uh, you can see the whole hall will be made into these various uh, sections or spaces uh, that will have images or built scenes from uh, sacred scripture uh, as the Lord revealed the Holy Eucharist to us in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, and today the church celebrates the uh, feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross. And I don't know if you can see our crucifix between my projectors here, our projectors. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that showed through, but uh, we are recognizing that through our Lord's cross, that he has triumphed over death. He has triumphed over sin, all that holds us back from really loving and experiencing and knowing God's um, love for us. And so we are so grateful for the cross and to really consider what this cross is is to us is the new tree of life he our lord is the fruit of that tree of life the cross is the tree of life and he is that fruit which or who we eat in the gift of the holy eucharist right so the cross is where we get the eucharist from it's from jesus giving his life on the cross that we have uh his body and blood to feast on to be able to be nourished, to have our deepest hungers satisfied, that hunger for love and life and peace and joy, uh, even in the midst of the sorrows of this earthly life, right? We have so many struggles and difficulties and there's so many people that are hurting in, in so many different ways, including those who've lost loved ones that are grieving, those who are sick, uh, those who are struggling with finances, those who are struggling with family discord. Uh, and so we need to continue to pray and all those struggles we offer in union with our Lord Jesus, who was lifted on the cross. I'm lifted up on the lift here. You can see, and I'm getting even higher. Look how far up I am here on this lift. I'm getting real comfortable with it. Um, when I first used it, it was really scary um, to be, let's see, I'm like 14 feet above the ground here in this little kind of caged <clears throat> box. Um, and um, I guess if it collapses, I can hold on to the to the truss. The truss is pretty sturdy, but um, we don't want to we don't have to do that. Um, and also the ladders. You see how tall these ladders are? Look at that, ten feet high. And um, uh, yeah, I was pretty scared to get up on the ladder <clears throat> to a certain point, but now I just I don't know. I've gotten used to it. I got to be careful though. Get too comfortable with it, it could could lead to um, a fall and an injury, which I certainly don't want. Um, but as you can see from my vantage point here, we got people working over in the uh, wedding feast at Cana room. We have that group that is uh, setting up their room first here, and um, yeah, just a lot of bustle. So, on this feast of the exaltation of the cross, let us remember that the Lord has given us Himself. From the cross right that he and that cross of Christ um, 
is the triumph of um, all that holds, again, holds us back from being um, filled by God. All right, what is that? That, that self-centeredness of the cross is really about a self-gift that Jesus empties himself. Our disobedience prevents us from being fed by God and that the cross represents uh, and shows, not just represents, but actually shows us a total and complete obedience to God's holy will. That's when Jesus commends himself into the hands of the Father from the cross. Uh, the cross also represents forgiveness. Right from the cross, Jesus says, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Um, the cross also shows us that Mary is our mother, right? The Blessed Virgin, right over here on my shoulder. You can kind of see her through the truss there. There you go. Um, our Lady of Guadalupe, that she is truly our mother. As Jesus says to the beloved disciple, behold your mother. And to uh, Mary, behold your son. And so she is truly our uh, Mother, and tomorrow we celebrate the, um, or recognize the Feast of the Sorrows, the Seven Sorrows of Mary. Um, we also are um, reminded about the cross for his humility. I mean, it's just a shameful death uh, at that time. It was considered an execution of the most shameful um, degree, um, uh, those who, in humiliation, and so Jesus humbles himself, right? That's the opposite of pride, the sin of pride, reaching out and doing for ourselves without God, um, like Satan tempted our first parents um, to do, is to disobey and to feed themselves and not allow God to feed them. Um, <clears throat> And the cross shows poverty, right? The, the being detached from earthly goods, that knowing that the earthly goods are not going to ever satisfy us, right? They're never going to satisfy us. I wish I had the cross in front of me, but again, I'm on this lift, you know, so I'd be showing you the, the crucifix, but you, you should look upon the crucifix today and really meditate on these things. Um, just take a few minutes just to look at our, let's see if I can, you can see it way over there. I guess I could get down from the lift here. Let's let's do that. Let me get down from the lift. So I'm going down here. Ooh, check it out. Check it out. Yeah, going down, down off the lift. Okay, I'm safely on the ground here. Um, there are a lot of hustle and bustle. You hear all the activity behind me. Um, but I'm going to go over to um, the crucifix as I end this. And there's Nikki laughing. And, Great to see you guys. Um, so I am going to be standing in front of the crucifix. So you can see part of what we're doing here. I don't want to give too much away. Um, there's a lot still to go, but there you go. Oh, there you go. So, so just remember our Lord Jesus gave his life for you, right? To have forgiveness of sins. This is how our sin is wiped away to take away our sin, to give us uh, what we need in order to uh, be filled by God, right? To take away those, those things that prevent us from, from uh, letting God open us and fill us and then through us to fill others, to feed others, right? That's what Jesus does from the cross is to give his body and blood, right? Pouring out that body or offering his body, pouring out his blood so that we can truly be fed. So, um, Again, blessings to all of you on this Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross. Wish I can get in a better position. There we go. All right. I don't know. I don't know if that's any better, uh, but I think you guys get the idea. Uh, please like and share this video. And if you haven't signed up for the experience of the Eucharist or registered for it, it is free, completely free. But you do need to go to eme2023.com to register and again we're looking for more volunteers so as we uh, start uh, the experience and it's a devotion so it's a devotional experience that's kind of how we're we're defining it or, or describing it so that people know that this is a time of prayer a time it's not an exhibit it's not an attraction uh, it is truly uh, a prayer uh, but in a little different way right maybe a little like stations of the cross live stations we don't have live actors well at least not in person we hear actors on the narration as you're going through the different rooms to hear the story 
of the older um, holy monk-like figure. His name is Amet, who is trying to lead his, or trying to get the Eucharist, and he's accompanied by his nephew, who doesn't really believe anymore in the Eucharist or in the faith. He's kind of lost that, being worldly, being pride, prideful, being consumed with um, material goods and pleasures. And see, that's the opposite of the cross, right? So in order to have what, what God wants to fill us with, uh, we we need to be freed from those things. Those are the obstacles. Those are the holding us back. Um, but Yuri then through that be accompany, accompanying his uncle, which at first he does for his own selfish reasons, but then later, uh, anyway, I don't want to give the story away, but uh, hopefully you've seen the trailer. Maybe we'll have the trailer again uh, on our uh, Facebook and um, on our YouTube. Uh, I think Ramon did a really wonderful job on that to show you kind of how the devotion will take place and what it's going to be like uh, a little bit to give you some kind of sense of it. Because it's totally different than, the, than what we did in June. Right? A lot of people I think are confused. They think that the panels that we did in June is what we're doing again here. And we're not. What we're doing is we're doing a completely new devotion. Uh, the panels were wonderful. They described all you know, the different Eucharistic miracles that have occurred in the church's history and important to understand uh, to help us to confirm the doctrine of the real presence for our Lord Jesus's body and blood. Um, and uh, so we had those, but now uh, this is a devotion to help us uh, understand through scripture, sacred scripture, what God has revealed about the tree, the new tree of life, right? That, um, that and, and Jesus being that fruit uh, from the tree of life to have eternal life. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. That's what our Lord tells us in John chapter 6, which is one of our rooms here, the, bread, the discourse on the bread of life that we're setting up and, and you'll hear about. All right, I think that's plenty, uh, but please like and share, share and like, and uh, get this out to as many people as possible. Make a comment. Uh, you're coming, coming to the experience, then make a comment. You're, you're going to be coming. Tell your friends, your family about it. You can pass it on, uh, and uh, we'll get as many people signed up again. It's free, and um, most blessed uh, feast of the Holy Cross to all of you. Thank you. Come and experience a devotion unlike you have ever seen before. In this one-of-a-kind event, you will be immersed in video projection and an audio narration to grow in a greater awareness and reverence of this most amazing gift of the Holy Eucharist. You will hear the exciting story of a dangerous journey to be fed by God with Jesus, the true food. I need to get to a priest. No, that's too dangerous. You're a wanted man and there are soldiers everywhere. I need true food for my journey. As you walk through full rooms with built scenes from sacred scripture, revealing how only God can feed our deepest hunger for peace, joy, life, and love, he does so with the body and blood of Jesus in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Don't miss out on this unique, immersive devotional experience starting September 29th, running only through October 22nd. Act now to register for your free spot. Go to our website, EME. 2023.com and click on the registration tab or call St. Joseph's Parish office. You only need Jesus. Be fed by him and be filled.